What's up everybody? This is Flash 001 USA and today is Friday, July 1st, 2016. The time is around 5 p.m. Now this video is a follow-up to something that I've already covered in the past and the topic is going to be about liposomal vitamin C. And to be honest, this follow-up video is long overdue. I've been making my own liposomal vitamin C for around a year and a half now. And along the way, I've learned a lot more about the process than I knew a year and a half ago. I've also made some improvements on the way that I make it. I've simplified a couple of things. And at this point, I feel pretty comfortable about it. I felt it was worthy of making a new video for those who may be interested in how to do this. Now, like a lot of people out there, I was using a common method for making it, which was basically a cup and a half of water, three tablespoons of lefacin, and a tablespoon of vitamin C. You know, you mixed all that together with a blender, then you ran it through the ultrasonic cleaner for about 15 or 20 minutes, and then you had liposomal vitamin C. But for those of you all out there that have tried this, you know how nasty that stuff tasted. I basically had to hold my nose when I was taking it. Now, while I continued making my own liposomal vitamin C, I never stopped researching the topic. Then I came across a guy that had a natural health food store, and he was also making liposomal vitamin C. He was doing it with a twist. He wasn't using the vitamin C powder. Instead, he substituted that with this natural cherry powder that was um, really extremely high in vitamin C content and very low in sugar content. His argument was he didn't want to use anything that was processed in the laboratory. So he was not hip on using the vitamin C powder. He also had a second argument. He wanted to take advantage of other vitamins and minerals that were inside the cherry powder. And I thought, you know what? You got my intention. So I ordered some of the cherry powder and I made some of this stuff up and I thought making it up the original way was bad. Oh my God. When you make it with the cherry powder, it's gooey and it's also bitter. And I thought there's got to be a way to improve this stuff. You know, I was kind of happy with using the natural ingredients, but I thought to myself, there's got to be another way to improve the taste on this. So I got this idea. I thought, you know what? I'm going to substitute some of the water with natural cherry juice unsweetened cherry juice, which I did. It did have a big plus with it because what it did was it added the essence of the cherries back into the mix and made it where, you know, it was presentable. Okay, that's the best way I can put it. Now, after I got comfortable with the process of making the new liposomal vitamin C with the cherry powder, I made a video which I uploaded to YouTube. I got a lot of reviews on it. Some of it was positive, some of it was neutral, and some of it was negative, which is what you normally expect from YouTube videos. The people that were giving it some negative feedback, they weren't out to get me, nor were they out there to give me a hard time. This was coming from people like microbiologists and chemists, and they did have some valid points. So if any of you guys are out there happen to catch this video, guess what? At this point, you realize that I took what you said to heart and listened to you very seriously. They had two main arguments, and let's start with the first one. All right, when you make liposomal vitamin C using the regular pure vitamin C, which is ascorbic acid, you know, just using a processed powder, your body doesn't have a problem absorbing that in. It can go right into your bloodstream and all is good. Your body will accept it and it will use it. Their argument was this. When you start making it with the cherry powder, you may be encapsulating things that you don't want going directly into your bloodstream. There may be other vitamins that are incompatible with your body until they're broken down by your body. You may be taking minerals into your system that you wouldn't want necessarily going into your bloodstream. They said the effects may not be noticeable immediately, but it could be accumulative over time. You know, that brought red flags up with me. I was like, you know what? These guys could be right about it. They didn't say they were 100% for sure. They said, you know what? If it was me, that was enough there to, you know, garner my attention. No doubt about it. All right, their second argument, which this argument held water. And they said it didn't matter if you were using the powdered vitamin C or the wild cherry powder. They said a lot of people on YouTube were screwing up with this. They said, you got to look at it like this. you got an acidic solution in liquid form and you're putting it in what? You're putting it into a metal container. They said, here's the problem with that. Over time, it could be also accumulative, but you could be breaking down some of the metals, some of the heavy metals or whatnot, and they could be getting into your bloodstream. And it may not show up short term, but long term, you could have issues down the road with it. So their point was, look, you know, if it was me, I would not do it 
with the liquid directly in contact with the metal, which brings us up to this new video. I've done a lot of workarounds. Not only have I improved the formula of how I'm doing it and simplified things, but I definitely got a workaround to keep us all safe from the possibility of absorbing heavy metals into our body. As I mentioned earlier, I've continued to research this topic on making liposome all vitamin C. That actually brought me across another guy that's making it. He does it quite different from the way you see it made on YouTube. He claims to have a little bit of inside knowledge on how they make it when they make it for production or make it professionally in a laboratory. He said there's two main differences when they make it professionally. He said first thing is they use ethyl alcohol in the process of making it. He said because the ethyl alcohol allows the vitamin C to break down much better than just doing it in water which means you can also get higher concentrations of the vitamin C into the solution. He said the second thing they do is during the encapsulation process itself, it doesn't matter if you're using an ultrasonic cleaner for the encapsulation or the way they do it in the factories are, they put the liquid under high pressure, they squirt it through a nozzle under high pressure and hit it onto a hard surface. That also encapsulates the vitamin C into the sunflower lepsin. He said, but the main thing is they maintained a temperature of 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius, whichever one floats your boat. He said that temperature is a sweet spot. He said that's the top of the bell curve, the best temperature to get the highest amount of encapsulation with. So that's how he makes his. Now he doesn't have high pressure nozzles. He does it the same way we're doing it with an ultrasonic cleaner. Now he's running a 12% by volume solution of alcohol in his. The thing about it is, well, we're making ours, like you see on YouTube, people add one or two tablespoons or six or 12, I guess, uh, grams of vitamin C. He's using like up to 140 grams of vitamin C into like, uh, I don't know, 16 ounces of solution. Man, that's battery acid. You know, but at the same time, you know, you can take a much lower dose of it. Now, he says when he takes his, I think he's taking around, um, I want to say, um, 60 mils or something, which would be about 12, 15,000 uh, milligrams of vitamin C. That's a little bit hot for me. So what I've done, guys, is I've adapted some of what he has into my way of making it. Now, where he's using a 12% by volume, I'm using 6% by volume, but really less than that because some of this alcohol is going to evaporate in the process. And basically, mine winds up being about the potency of average beer. But the thing about it is, you're not drinking a lot of this stuff, so you're not going to get high on it. You're only drinking, I take about one and a half to two ounces in the morning, so there's not enough alcohol in it, you know, where I feel like I'm going to be concerned that I'm going to be driving down the road blurry-eyed or, or fuzzy-headed. The last thing I want to do is get up in the morning and have a martini for breakfast and get out and drive a vehicle. But, like I said, I've experimented with this. I couldn't tell you how many bottles of this stuff that I went through, how many batches that I've made. And I'm telling you, I've probably been through four or five, six bottles of this stuff right here. I've made a lot of liposomal vitamin C and used a lot of it. So I actually messed with this stuff until I found what I consider to be a sweet spot. And what I consider to be a sweet spot with this, if you remember earlier in the video, I mentioned the stuff always had a bitter taste. That's because the encapsulation process is never 100%. What I found out using a little bit of alcohol in the mix was you wound up with a solution that almost tasted neutral. It lost a lot of the bitterness, so that tells me that I'm getting a lot more encapsulation process. Remember the nasty taste? Well, I got to work around for that. Hold on one second. After I do the encapsulation process, after I run it through the ultrasonic cleaner, I add natural flavors to it. You can get this from any wine making or beer or brewer's website, and this stuff is actual extracts from the fruit. You can get any flavor you want to. Blackberry, strawberry, peach, you name it. So whatever floats your boat. And I add like about a half a teaspoon to the mix after it's done and I put it in the fridge. This was the ticket. This took the nastiness out of it. So I wanted to explain all this to you. I'm sorry that I made the video long and dried out like this, but I felt that I had to give you the reasoning of why I'm making this new video, why I've implemented the new changes with it. So guys, what we're going to do right now is we're going to pause out and I'm going to show you how I'm making a batch of this firsthand. So take a standby with me. All right, before we get started making this batch of liposomal vitamin C, we're going to briefly cover the ingredients along with the quantities that you'll need for this. And near the end of the video, we'll cover everything with more detail, including the dosages.
The first thing that you're going to need will be 14 ounces of pure water, preferably distilled water. Don't use anything out of your spigot because more than likely it's going to contain contaminants. It could be anything from minerals to the chemical additives the water company adds before it gets to your house. The next thing you'll need, two ounces of grain alcohol. That's this stuff right here. That's 190 proof, known as rocket fuel. Next thing, four tablespoons of sunflower lecithin, non-GMO. That's this stuff right here. The next thing you're going to need will be two and a half teaspoons of vitamin C powder. That's this right here. Now, if you weigh this out on a scale, it'll come out to right, I mean, right at exactly 12.5 grams on a set of accurate scales. And that's going to be roughly 12,500 milligrams of vitamin C that we're going to be putting into this mixture. So let's get started. Oh, before we do that, this is up here, but he doesn't go in until the process is finished. He's the last part of the equation. This is just to put flavoring into it to get rid of the nasty flavor out of it. So, in other words, once we do the whole process, running it through the ultrasonic cleaner and getting the vitamin C encapsulated, this is the very last thing that happens right here. You put just enough in there to suit your taste. We'll cover that more in detail at the end of the video. All right, guys, as I mentioned earlier, I went ahead and pre-measured all the ingredients to make everything simpler. Now, the water... I went ahead and heated this up in the microwave oven and we pulled the thermometer out of it. We're sitting around 152 degrees. Now hopefully you'll be able to see this. It's actually dropping as I pulled it out of the water. Regardless, it's well past the sweet spot, which is 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to be putting it into the blender. And of course, the temperature will be dropping down as I do this. We're not concerned about it right yet. The main thing about getting that 95 degrees target temperature will be when we're actually encapsulating the vitamin C. And that's going to happen inside the ultrasonic cleaner. So we're going to pour this in here. And I'm going to do something here. I'm going to turn it sideways actually so you can see what's going on. I'm going to turn the blender on. Just watch what happens to the water. Now watch what happens when I add the alcohol to it. You can tell that it makes a big difference in it. Pour that in there. Big difference, huh? All right, at this point, we're going to go ahead and add our vitamin C to it. So I'll turn this on. Everything is on low, it's the lowest setting possible. We'll let that run for a couple of seconds. Now we're going to add this stuff here. And add our lips in it. That's it. Are we going to let this run for about a minute? Uh, anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute. The main thing is you don't want any chunks of this stuff right here floating around in it. You don't want anything you know, that's solid in there. So we'll let it run for a minute. That's it. It's mixed up and the next thing we want to do is we're going to put it back in this jar right here. We'll let it set for a little bit. There's a couple reasons for doing this. First of all, we want to let all the gas inside of it that the blender put in it get out of the mix. If you don't, it'll make the job for the ultrasonic cleaner almost impossible to encapsulate it. Any kind of air that's trapped inside of this stuff right here will hose the process with the ultrasonic cleaner. Now what I like to do guys is when I pour this off, I don't want this foam in here, so I actually got a small screen that I use. And I actually poured this through a screen, and that'll remove a lot of these suds here, but I'm not going to do anything yet. I'm going to let it sit in the blender for about four or five minutes. I'm not concerned about the vitamin C oxidizing or anything like that. I mean, for that short of Mickey Mouse time, it's not going to go bad on us, trust me. Now, with that said, you know, once this sets up, the temperature is also going to be dropping on it, and that's a good thing. We don't want to be trying to do this process with it really hot. So we'll give this a few minutes, then I'll come back in on the video with you. Okay, we're back, and I'm going to zoom in on the top of the blender. I want you to see all the foam that's came to the top. And it's still got a good bit of air bubbles in it, but that'll work out as we do the process. 
Okay, put it right about there. This is my little screen that I use right here. The good thing is it hits right on top of the jar. And all we got to do is this number right here. Just pour it very gently. Now it's not going to capture every air bubble, but it will help get a lot of it out of there for us. It'll catch some of the stubborn stuff. At this point, we still have air bubbles in it, so we're going to let it set for a few more minutes. And besides that, that's still above 95 degrees, so we got plenty of time. We're going to let this actually settle some more, let the air that's trapped in it float to the top. And basically what I'll do before I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner is I'll go ahead and take a spoon and scoop it out of there. Get the foam out of it, that way I can go ahead and get the process going. So we'll come back in here in a few more minutes. We're going to let this drop down to the temperature, to the target point, and... We'll start encapsulating this stuff. Take a standby. Okay, now for the encapsulation process. This is where we use the ultrasonic cleaner. Now, remember I told you we need to keep a target temperature of around 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. All right. I hope you can see that. It'll drop as I pull it out of here. Now, this is water right here, but that's going to be going inside of here. Both the water and our vitamin C mixture are pretty much at 95 degrees. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add the water to this guy right here. Now something else too, I had mentioned um, earlier in the clip, you don't want to be putting the liquid directly into here because you don't want heavy metals to be leaching in. So what we're going to use guys is just an everyday sandwich baggie. We're going to pour the liquid in here and it's going to sit inside of the ultrasonic cleaner. Just like that. The good thing about this bag is it's very thin and it'll lay exactly flush with the bottom of the ultrasonic cleaner and you can look inside and see the top of the liquid. You'll actually see all the patterns and everything that develop on top of the vitamin C and you'll know that the encapsulation process is actually working like it should. Don't use a jar and just stick it in there. If you do, you're going to lose too much energy in the jar from the thick glass. If you're going to use anything, use a laboratory beaker with a wide mouth on it. And if you're going to go that route, cut you a piece of cardboard and cut you a hole in it so that when you put your beaker inside there, that it stands in free air, that it doesn't touch anything on the sides of this guy right here. Then, of course, you fill your water up accordingly and basically that will get the job done too. But the baggie, it's nice and thin. It's, you know, it's just extremely thin. So it's not going to interfere with the process. And don't close the top of it either. Let it stay wide open. Remember me telling you that some of the alcohol will evaporate in the process. That's probably happening here with this being open. So let's get started. Now, by the way, I meant to mention this. I've already got the foam off the top of this. And we're sitting right now. We're sitting up here at our target temperature. And all i got to do is hit this guy right here. and we're off to the races. The beautiful thing about this is I've got a timer on it. And guys, believe it or not, I've actually got a, a place here to set the temperatures on this if I want to. But for this, I don't need it because it's running such a short period of time that this will stay where it's at. And I think, guys, this here is the target temperature. That's 32 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what this number is here. i got to go back and read it. So we're just a little bit below 95 degrees Fahrenheit, but this will climb anyhow because what's going to happen is as the ultrasonic cleaner runs, the physical, just the, the physical aspect of it running will actually raise the temperature up a little bit in it. If it was wintertime, when I make this stuff in wintertime, this actually comes in good because I can turn around and set the target temperature. I think this is the target temperature, and then this is the actual temperature right here. And all I have to do is turn it on, and it'll, it'll find its target temperature. But we don't need to do that. Yeah, it's actually climbing. See it? I think it just jumped up a degrees. I think it was at 32 degrees a minute ago. So there you go. And we're going to let this thing rock and roll, guys. And we're going to let it count down to zero. Now, while we're doing this, you know, every couple of minutes, swap by it. Take your spoon. And by the way, have you a clean surface. Keep everything on a clean surface. 
keep your spoon over here, plastic spoon, and just kind of do that number right there, stir everything up a little bit. And what that does, it makes sure you get an even distribution of the liquid in the bag, which in turn, you know, you know that everything's going to be getting the encapsulation process on it. So let's keep our fingers crossed, and once this is finished, I'll pull this out of here, we'll put it back into the jar, at which point we'll add our additive as far as our flavor goes to it. Oh, I meant to mention something else about this. Now, you probably haven't heard anybody say this on YouTube. Believe it or not, the encapsulation process happens with this the moment you mix this crap up in the blender and you turn it on. Just sitting in the jar, cooling down, it was already encapsulating. Now, for those of you all out there that try this, I want you to try this experiment. You'll be able to prove it for yourself. As soon as you mix the ingredients together, as soon as you put it in a blender and blend it, pour it to your jar like you're going to let it cool down, dip your spoon in it and taste it. You'll taste how bitter it is. After you let it set, for like this took about 10 minutes to drop down to its target temperature or close enough to it, it was just a little bit less bitter. By the time it runs through this guy right here, by the time it runs through our ultrasonic cleaner, you'll be able to taste it and the bitterness will be very much diminished and that's what you're looking for because the less you taste on it the more encapsulation that you have with the process and that's what you're shooting for you can hear me stirring this and hear the noise coming off of it this baggy trick works really good trust me guys I've tried a lot of different methods with this because after realizing or, you know, hearing the guys on the last video discussing, hey, you may be in just um, ingesting some heavy metals. I was like, oh, i got to find another way around this. So this was my secret weapon, guys. This is what I'm doing right here. And we're almost, uh, we're not too far, but maybe about a minute and a half away from being a third of the way through the process. That's it. I'm going to pause the video out. I'll bring you back after this is done. So I'll bring you back in here. No, I think what I'll do is I'll bring you back in um, at the five minute point here before it's finished. Okay, we're counting down. And as you can see, remember me telling you the temperature would climb up a little bit? So now we're at 38 degrees Celsius. So we've actually climbed up just a little bit, but it's still not going to hurt the process. This isn't so critical that it's got to be 95 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, just on the button. You know, if you float around a little bit, it's not going to hurt it, and you see how long it took it to climb up where it's at now. Regardless of the encapsulation process, I mean, it'll be done correctly like this. Uh, we just got a couple more minutes here, guys, and I'm going to pour it into the jar, and we'll go ahead and add some flavor to it and put it in the fridge, and it'll be ready for me to use tomorrow morning. By the way, when this stuff sits up overnight, it makes a big difference in it. And if I didn't know any better, just speaking from personal experience, I'd almost say that just the point of it cooling back down when it's in the fridge and setting up like that, it gets milder and milder tasting. We're counting down, guys. This thing's loud as hell when it buzzes off, too. All right. We're done and we're ready to go ahead and put this into the jar and add some flavor to it. I would have brought the camera over the top of this so you could see down inside the bag and see the water and see the vitamin C bulging up and all the patterns in it from this guy right here, but it, the noise on this thing is so incredibly loud, it washes out the camera. And if any of you all have ever seen a camera when it's brought over to an ultra, ultrasonic cleaner like this, buddy, it wipes it out. So on that note, we're going to go ahead and pour this guy into our jar and add the flavor into it and we're done with it. I'm going to pause that again. I'm going to get this out of the way and bring the jar over here. All we need to do now is add our flavoring into it, stir it up and put it in the fridge. Let me show you something here. It's not gooey. It's not chalky looking. It came out pretty good actually. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some flavoring to it. This is blackberry because I, I'm, I'm a wine maker too, but that's something I haven't never bothered to make videos with. I make a lot of wine, guys. This stuff's like nitroglycerin. 
about a half a teaspoon is all you need with it. Remember, never add the flavoring to it during the encapsulation process. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, congratulations. You have made you a batch of liposomal vitamin C. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to discuss the dosages and the potency of this so that you understand what you've got now that you've got it made. Take a standby. I'm going to break out some notes here. But it'll just make it easier for me. Okay, let's discuss dosages along with the potency of what we made here. And we'll also compare this to regular pill form vitamin C. Now remember that we took 12,500 milligrams of powdered vitamin C and we dissolved it into a 16 ounce solution. And even if you divided that up into 16 one ounce doses, that's roughly 781 milligrams and some change of vitamin C that's in solution in here. But normally you're going to want to take it in anywhere between one and a half to two ounce doses. And we'll start with two ounces at first. Two ounces, you're going to have roughly 1,562 milligrams of some vitamin C, along with some change there. And if you take a one and a half ounce dose, if you want to start it off at a lower dosage to see how it's going to react with you, you're still going to be getting around 1,172 milligrams and some change of vitamin C. And you're probably wondering, okay, you're looking at this vitamin C right here, and this is 1,000 milligrams, you know, for a pill of it. You think to yourself, now why would I go through all this trouble when I can take a 1,000 milligram pill when you're telling me that one and a half ounces is just a little bit above this? Well, here's the deal. It's all about absorption rate. And with pill form vitamin C, you take a 1,000 milligrams, you're only going to absorb 20% of it. So in other words, you're only going to get 200 milligrams of that vitamin C. You would have to take one, two, three, four, five of these to equal this. Well, here's the problem with it. When you start taking high doses of pill form vitamin C, it has a tendency to upset your stomach. And even if you're healthy and you know, have any kind of health issues, you know, anything that would stop you from using high doses of vitamin C. Average person, they start taking four and five thousand milligrams, they start having issues like diarrhea and whatnot. So, so it just passes through your system. The beauty of it is, with liposomal vitamin C, you get a very high absorption rate for a very small amount of vitamin C. And let me explain this. With liposomal vitamin C, it's almost the inverse of this, where you get a 20% uh, absorption rate. It's the inverse. At the best, you can get an 80% absorption rate. So in other words, if you take one of these things right here, like two ounces of this, at 1,563 milligrams, you're going to get roughly 1,250 milligrams in your system. And let's say that they're, you know, that they're wrong in their figures and it's not that high. Let's do it at 70%. You're still going to get 1,094 milligrams in your system. Even at 65%, you're getting 1,000 milligrams. So, like I said, this is very efficient. Plus, you're not going to see an upset stomach with this. That's the beauty of it. Because you're not taking high doses of raw vitamin C into your system. The way the liposoids work, or the way this works, is the lefacin, because it encapsulates the vitamin C, for some reason, in your you were in your intestinal tract where all the your nutrients are absorbed at. This stuff is the perfect key for the lock. It perfectly passes through, you know, into your blood system. And because of that, this stuff here has the vitamin C encapsulated in bubbles in it, like it's a, a bubble around it. So your digestive tract really doesn't break it down. It bypasses your stomach and gets into your intestines and everything. And because it's like the perfect key for the lock, it dumps a high amount of the vitamin C into your system where you get two pluses. First of all, you get the, the high dose of vitamin C for a low amount going into your body compared to this stuff right here. But also, your brain, all your gray matter in your brain, well, that's pretty much made up of the lefacin, so you get a double whammy from it. The, the lefacin is a good builder for your brain and everything in other parts of your body, and you get the vitamin C out of it. So I hope this helps you guys and you understand the difference in it. Now, something I will mention for those of you that may be leery of using alcohol in the mix, I understand that. You can omit the alcohol and go with 16 ounces of water, but just keep in mind that the, the encapsulation rate, it will not be as efficient like that, and the solution will be bitter, you know, compared to doing it like this. 
So, I mean, it does work, but it's not going to be as efficient, and you're not going to have as much potency as the way I'm doing it right here. So just keep that in mind. I have experimented with this. Trust me, guys, I've done this in so many different ways, trying to figure out, trying to find that sweet spot. And I, honestly, I think I've gotten it with this right here. I will be putting a link into the YouTube video so that you can see where I got the, uh, got the information, the idea about using the alcohol with it. And you'll see how this guy does his. Like I said, he, he's doing it different, doing the same thing, but with much higher alcohol content, much higher vitamin C content, and less than it is. So his is pretty much, it's a powerhouse. So you can do it that way if you'd like to also. But I like the idea of doing it like this right here because you can, even though you're drinking two ounces of it, you know, it's more liquid that you're taking in, but at the same time, I feel that it probably absorbs better into your system like this. But that's just me personally. I can't prove that, but I have seen positive results in using it. I feel good about using this. I feel good enough about making the video for you on this. I'll also be putting this into a PDF format so that you guys can just download a PDF with all the ingredients, the how-to step-by-step. So hopefully this helps you. This is Flash001USA. Peace out, everybody. Have a good 4th of July. Bye-bye.